Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi here. We're going to try to understand the idea of what some teachers call mini cubes. Let's take a look at what we have here on the right. If this is a full unit cube, for example, it's uh, a cubic inch or a cubic foot or a cubic meter, you can break this up into little mini cubes. What does that really mean? So let's say we're talking about this one right here. This is a half unit cube. What does that mean? It means that the edge, and I'll try to trace it here in red, you would need two of those to make up the edge of the full unit cube. So in other words, two, see one, two of those unit cubes going across to be equal to the one full unit. Now, when we think in terms of how many mini cubes do you need to make up the full cube, look at the picture. This is an enlargement of this. And you can see we have one, two, three, four in the front and four more in the back for a total of eight mini cubes that would be equivalent to the one full cube. Now, how would we get this number eight if we didn't have the pretty picture to look at? If we cube this, because volume is cubic, we would do, I'll move it down here on the bottom, that would be the same as a half times a half times a half. And what does that equal? One times one times one equals one. Two times two equals four. And if we take the four and multiply it by two, we get eight. So how should we think of this? One of these cubes right here, what I'm calling a mini cube or a half cube, is one eighth of this full cube. That's an important relationship to understand because what does that mean? You're gonna be going back and forth between full cubes and sometimes half cubes, sometimes third cubes, sometimes fourth cubes, and you have to understand this relationship. Let's take a look at, let me erase all this, and let's look at the next cube to the left, which we're calling a third unit. How many, how many edges can you fit along the bottom of this thing? Three, see, one, two, three. You can fit three edges for every one for a full cube. Now, how would we figure out the, um, oh, I hate it when that happens. How do we figure out how many cubes this is? We would cube this, one third times one third times one third. One times one times one equals one. Three times three is nine. And then if we do the nine times three, we get 27. So what does that mean? That means that one of these cubes right here, I'll just take this one on the corner, is 1 27th the volume of a full cube. You need 27 of them to make up the full cube. Now, what does that have to do with some of the word problems that you're gonna see? So let's take a look at this word problem right here. It says a reptile tank is a right rectangular prism. The tank is one foot long, three fourths feet wide, and one and a half feet tall. What is the volume of the tank? And if they show you this image, then what you're supposed to understand here is if you look here, this says one feet, but that doesn't mean this cube is a cubic foot. That just means that this cube right here is a quarter foot cube. You would need four of these. This is the quarter inch cube. You would need four of these to go across to make one foot. So if we have to just find the volume, then we can just apply the, the numbers that are given in feet, but we would have to turn them into improper fractions. So how about we call this the length, we'll call this the width, and we'll call this the height. We'll substitute the one in for the L. For W, we'll put in the 3 fourths. And for the height, we're gonna turn that into an improper fraction. So this will be something halves. To get the something, multiply two times one, which is two, and then add in the one, which would be three. And some people like to just put a one underneath this. All right, look for any cross-reducing opportunities. We don't have any, don't see any. So that means we'll go right across. One times three is three, and three times three would be nine. One times four would be four, and four times two would be eight. Next, we would uh, rename this as a mixed number. We would have to find what nine divided by eight is. And it would go in once with the one left over. So the volume in cubic feet would be one and one eighth cubic feet. So we would put a little exponent of a two there. 
I didn't make that very neat. Let's tidy that up. Now, one of the things that they could ask you is they could ask you how many quarter inch, or I'm sorry, feet cubes can we fit in this? Now, if we're interested in knowing that, we have four going across this way. So we have four of these. We have three going across this way. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six going this way. So one of the things that we could do, and I'll write the numbers over here. So again, the length was four, the width was three, and these are the quarter inch cubes, and the height is six of the quarter inch cubes. So if we were to find how many cubes we're talking about here, we would do four times three, which would be 12, multiply it by the six and get 72. But that's 72 of these. It's 72 of the quarter inch cubes. So if we wanted to take it to the next step and figure out what's the actual volume of the thing in cubic feet, then what we would have to do is we'd have to take into account that we're multiplying this times one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. Now it's good practice to know what this cubed is. Just have that in your head, what one fourth cubed is. Four times four is 16. So if we did the 16 times four, here we get the 24, four and then the two more makes 64. So this equals 1 64th. Now, did you know that if we took 1 64th of 72, that we're back to this number that we got over here, that would equal 1 and 1 8th when we simplified it. Now, if you want to look at how would we do that this way, we might divide by 8 and get 8, divide by 8 and get 9. Look familiar? Doesn't this equal 9 eighths? And we already know that 9 eighths renames as 1 and weights because we did that before. And that would be, again, cubic feet. Remember, this would be half, or I'm sorry, quarter, quarter foot cubes. And you would have to label it as such if you wrote that on your paper. Now, if they ever ask you to write an expression that could be used to find the volume, this whole thing can get moved up here. And you would just write this as your expression. This expression could be used to find the volume in cubic feet for this rectangular prism. All right, so let's take a look at maybe another example. Let me see if I can find one that I like. Let's look at, not that one. Let's look at, that one's just kind of straightforward volume. Maybe there's one on the bottom. Yeah, let's look at number four. The right rectangular prism is filled with cubes. The edge length of each cube is a half inch. So that means that from there to there is a half inch, which by the way means that this would be a full inch, right? One inch, two inch, three inches. So they wanna know what's the volume of the prism, but they wanna know not in ha how many half inch cubes, they wanna know how many full you know, cubic units are there. So we have a couple ways we can approach this. One way, is to figure out how many of the half inch cubes we have. So we have going this way, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of the half, which means we would have three of the full cubic units. And going back, we have one, two, three, four of the half. And going up, we have one, two, three of the half. So I'm gonna write these blue numbers down and we're not gonna think about the full unit cubes just yet. I'm just gonna write them down over here because to find the volume, recall that you would do length times width times height. So we have, let's call this the length, six the length, let's call four the width and three the height. But remember, these are half inch cubes. So if we wanna know the volume in regular cubic units, then we would have to multiply in with it a half times a half times a half. And you might be wondering, well, why? The reason why is because we need to work into this. What's the volume of one of these little cubes or what we call a mini cube? And it would be the product of these red numbers. And if I multiply those red numbers, 
one half times one half is one fourth and one fourth times one half is one eighth. So all of that equals one eighth. And we looked at that picture before and we see why there's eight cubes for every, every eight of the half inch cubes for every one full inch cube. So if we find this blue product and take one eighth of it, that's going to give us the volume in cubic inches. So let's look for some pre-reducing opportunities. Let's stick ones underneath these just to make it a little tidy. And that way you'll see more clearly how we can take advantage of this reducing opportunity right here. We can divide by four and get one and divide by four and get two. And then we can also reduce here and here. Two is a common factor of this number and this number. So let's divide by, I'll use a different color so we can see what's going on here. Divide by two and get one, divide by two and get three. All right, so we have all ones on the bottom, which makes it a lot easier because that means the denominator would be one. And all we have to do is multiply the numerators. We have three times one, which is three, times, th if this is three times three more would be nine, and nine times one would be nine. So nine divided by one would be nine. So they wanna know what's the volume of the prism, not in half inch cubes, but in full inch cubes. You would say nine cubic inches. All right, now again, if they wanted to know how many half inch cubes we need to fill up this container, then you would just be multiplying these numbers together and that would be your answer. But they wanna know the volume of the prism in cubic units, which makes this a little bit more complex.